years before, before I finally retired and, and, uh, and then decided in retirement to run for the school board. And I don't know what was the matter with me, <laughs> but, that, but that's what I did. So I just want to talk to you a little bit. The reason I wanted to start early was so that you could ask as many questions as, as you could given the time that we had, because it's more important not so much that you hear what I have to say, but if you have questions that I hopefully I can answer them or refer you to someone who can. Having said that, what I'd like to do is kind of just bring you up to date on where we are today and, and what the near future, I think, holds for us. As, as most of you know, um, you can't hear me? Is it because this is, this is distorting it? Is it because of the distortion? I'm not sure it's on. Get it closer? Yes. You hear that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, so um, um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about, about what is in store for us in the, in the near future as well. So what's going on today and what's in store for us in the near future in the society public. As you well know, we have been going through a search process for, I guess, close to a year close to a year. We started out initially and, and what we did at the time was because there had been some community dissatisfaction with the way the previous searches had gone, we said, okay, wait a minute, let us do it a bit differently. So what we did was convene the community advisory committee that had really a very broad representation, probably as broad a representation as any, any community uh, group that, this, that the school board has ever um, engaged when it came to searching for a new superintendent. And um, we had, there were 20 members of that board, and we didn't choose the people ourselves because we feel, felt like it's not our idea to appoint who the community leaders are. What we did is identify constituency groups and then ask them to send who they wanted to. Yeah, and so that was a whole different way, I think, of doing it in the way that we were, we were really proud of of having it happen. And so, and so some of the folks who were represented were, were the um, SUCASA, um, the Metropolitan Area Religious Coalition, the uh, Greater Society Regional Chamber of Commerce, the African American Chamber of Commerce, the Urban Appalachian Council. So they really had a pretty broad group of constituencies represented, we, we believe. And, and what we said is we, the board was going to empower this group of citizens to make the first cut of uh, uh, the applicants for, for school board. In addition to doing that the first time around, we did a huge, a good number of community forums that we did around the city. We convened about eight of them around the city. We convened meetings with the staff. We convened meetings with the students to actually develop the profile of what, we want, of what this community wanted to see in a superintendent. So we were really, 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 I think, very clearly wanting to make sure that as we went through the process, we had as broad community backing as possible. Well, we did that, we did surveys, we put all that together, we went through a process and we used the search firm the first time. And you all know what happened. The, the search firm did not work with us as well as we would have liked. We had to part ways and then we finished the process. And we, it's not that we didn't have candidates, it's just that we didn't have all good candidates, and that we didn't find somebody that we thought fit Cincinnati. So rather than rush into getting a superintendent, what we decided to do is to stop, appoint an interim superintendent, and then to proceed with the search over, this, over the course of this school year. So we did. We unanimously appointed um, um, currently interim superintendent Mary Rowan into that position. Um, we also gave them the charge, don't just maintain what we're doing. Move forward on our strategic initiatives and continue, you know, we continue going forward, excuse me. So, so after that had happened, about five months in, we said, okay, it's, it's now time to search for a new superintendent because, because we were told by sitting superintendents from across the country, you don't make people apply in the fall because if they apply in the fall, they become lame duck and they want to do what they want to do for that year. So what you do is you wait till the first of the year, then you then you, you start with your search again. That is exactly what we did. We we talked to the community advisory committee once again and talked to them about do we move forward because at that point in time we were beginning to get pressure. And frankly, that was fine except that. 
that's not the way you do a, a human resource process. You don't just say, here's somebody, we like them, you know, we need to make them superintendent. This is a to keep us rolling and half billion dollar a year organization. Yes, that's what our our, our, our um, budget is. It's almost a half billion dollars a year. So we could only act responsibly by continuing to do a national search and making sure that this community got the best superintendent that it, that it needed to, to, to help us move forward. And so I believe that we've done, actually the board has done a very good job of that, has been very inclusive of the community, and today we'll know at least the results of this part of the search. I'm not going to tell. No. <laughs> but what I am doing, so, so that's one thing that the district has faced, is really getting getting uh, new leadership and, and stable leadership so that we can really move forward in, the, in this district and make sure that children achieve. The other thing that the board did was we adopted four goals. And I'm going to talk about moving forward in the context of those four goals because these are the goals around which we all should, be, should organize ourselves to, to help uh, CPS and help our students really uh, achieve. And, and the first one was we needed to accelerate student achievement. One of the things, one of the challenges that the district faces is we've kind of hit a plateau. We used to be an academic emergency many years ago, then we moved up to academic watch, and then we moved up to continuous improvement, and we were, that's where we've been for the last four years. That's, that was not accept, that's not acceptable to the board. It also shouldn't be acceptable to this community. You know, and so, though there are wonderful things happening in CPS, our job is to achieve it unless we're moving up into to be effective, an effective uh, school district. You know, we haven't done our job as well as we should be, and this community has not done its job as well as, as it should. So, so our, our first and primary goal is to accelerate student achievement. So everything that this that the new superintendent does will have to address how do we get out of the out of the rut of continuous improvement? That's just not not good enough. How do we really yank a, a huge system out of its um, I won't say doldrums because that's not where it is, but but out of the rut that we've gotten in, how do we how do we really shoot past that plateau so that we know that every child in the in the system is getting the quality education that they need? So that's that's our that's our job. You know, the, the good news is is that is that between um, uh, the new president and between um, and, and, and our our current governor. I think we'll, we'll see a renewed effort in urban education that we have not seen before. So, so towards that end, one of the good pieces of news is that we have economic stimulus, we have economic stimulus money that's coming directly to the school district. That we don't have to apply for it. You know, we don't have to do anything. But, but it is because it's um, it's given to us categorical grants in Title One dollars and an IDEA money, which is the disability the, the dollars for children with disabilities. Right? Of special needs. And so those dollars are given to us by formula already, so we will begin receiving them and it'll give us extra money for two years to really focus on those one-time things that we need to get done that we couldn't get done otherwise. You know, so um, and coupled with the governor's reforms, we should have some flexibility in terms of moving forward. So that's our first goal. Our first goal is to accelerate student achievement. That is the only reason we are in business is to educate children, and so our job is to make sure that they all get educated, as I said before. The second goal is to, um, uh, is, is to create a financially stable and transparent district. We want you all to know, who are taxpayers, how we are spending your money, and we need for those decisions to be made transparently. That is a goal that this board, this board um, adopted. And so it will be obviously um, a challenge. Plus we have to just continue, unfortunately, coming back to, to um, um, local taxpayers because we still haven't quite changed up the funding for it. The state still hasn't quite um, um, changed enough that, that is still relying on 